The problem with the census is that it's very expensive, it's very difficult, and it's usually impossible to, to collect information on every single unit in the target population. Instead, what happens is the set of respondents that we actually collect information from when we attempt to do a census is not representative of the target population. Perhaps we miss all the homeless people if we try to gather information on everyone in the U.S., for example. If we're doing an election poll and we try to call every household in the U.S., perhaps, or, or in Massachusetts, perhaps we miss the people who primarily use cell phones or the people who don't have phones at all. So let's think about other ways we could gather information about our S demand without attempting to collect information on every unit in the target population. The way to do that is to define a sample population. Let's let this pink rectangle represent our sample population. The sample population is the set of units that have some chance of being included in our study. The sample population is a set of units such that each unit in the sample population has some probability of ending up in our data set. Note that the sample population is not necessarily a subset of the target population. You see that this pink rectangle goes a little bit outside the blue circle, and that can happen in some cases. For example, if we're thinking of a phone survey for an election and we're trying to find out how people are going to vote, if I take the phone book for a certain region and I say this is my sample population, I'm going to think about calling all the phone numbers in this book, some of those phone numbers are going to belong to people who are not eligible to vote. Maybe they're, um, maybe they're immigrants, um, maybe they're felons, there's some other reason they're not allowed to vote. So if the set of all phone numbers is my sample population, perhaps some of the units in that sample population are actually not in the target population. Or if I'm interested in um, the heights of women in the United States and my sample population, people who have a chance of being in my study, um, the sample population consists of women at Wellesley. Well, not all the women at Wellesley are United States citizens. So some of the units, some of the people who have a chance of ending up in my study, uh, if the sample population is defined that way, are not actually in the target population. Of course, your goal is to come up with a sample population that is as close to the target population as possible. So again, the sample population is a set of units that have some chance of ending up in your study. And the units that actually end up in your study are called the sample. The sample is the set of units that you actually try to collect information on. By definition, the sample is a subset of the sample population. Not everyone that you try to collect information from is going to respond. So a subset of the sample you can call the respondents. Say that I come up with a great method for selecting a set of potential voters from Massachusetts to contact and I call them all. Even if that set of phone numbers I chose for my sample was representative of the target population, not everyone's going to pick up the phone. And so my list of respondents is a subset. So again, we have our target population of units that we're interested in studying. Our sample population is the set of units that have some chance of actually ending up in our study. The sample is the set of units selected from the sample population that we're actually going to attempt to study, and the respondents are the people who, or the units um, who actually end up in our data set.